Turkey's military is warning citizens in northern Syria to stay in their homes as Ankara gets prepared to stage an attack. Local Syrian sources say the strike alert comes as Turkish drones and troops have been deployed to border cities in Aleppo Governorate. Turkey has ramped up its attacks on Syrian border cities recently. Three Syrian military personnel were killed and six others injured in Tuesday's airstrikes on the outskirts of Aleppo. Syrian military sources say the strikes are part of Turkey's long-running efforts in support of terrorist groups in the country's north. Damascus has responded by targeting Turkish bases and armed groups inside of Syria. It has vowed not to let any attack on its army positions go unanswered. Mohamed Ali is a correspondent joining us from Damascus to tell us about the latest on this story. Ken Stone, Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War, also joins us from Hamilton, Ontario, to give us an analysis. Mohamed Ali, tell us more about what has occurred at this point. Has the operation actually um, gone into uh, its full intensity, or has anything happened yet? Yeah, so far, uh, no uh, Turkish uh, military ground operation happened in northern Syria. What happened yesterday was that, according to an official uh, military source here in Syria, uh, there were uh, attacks by Turkish uh, by the Turkish Air Force on Syrian uh, army positions around Ain al Arab Kobani at about 2:37 in the afternoon PM local time, which led to killing three Syrian uh, army. Uh, uh, personnel and injuring six others they were taken to the hospital inside Kobani uh, itself the Syrian uh, army forces uh, responded to the gunfire uh, causing according to uh, the uh, military source also inflicting damages and also causing uh, human casualties uh, in those Turkish uh, positions and also destroying some of them. The Syrian army uh, statement uh, confirmed that it will respond to any attack uh, on all front lines. This is definitely a very significant development happening there. Perhaps this is the first time we see direct targeting between both the Turkish side and the Syrian uh, uh, side. The, uh, Yesterday, uh, some mosques on the Turkish side of the border announced using uh, their speakers uh, uh, calling on families to stay indoor and that there will be some kind of a military operation. But this did not happen because following that, the governor of Gaziantab in Turkey, uh, Davut Gul, uh, said on Twitter on his account that the announcement exceeded their purposes and that the situation is normal and there's nothing outside the routine. So no military operation on ground, but attacks. And, and, and strikes from Turkey continue, not just in that part of Syria and the northern countries out of Aleppo, but also uh, uh, in the northeastern part of Syria, as also the Turkish troops and uh, Turkish-backed uh, terrorist groups are attacking the Aluk uh, water pumping station, which is affecting also the civilians there. Okay, um, what, why is Turkey attacking Syrian positions? Well, uh, we haven't heard any kind of statement from Turkey with this regard, but what is confirmed is that Turkey does not want any kind of a solution for Syria. Uh, it only wants unrest uh, to continue. It wants to prolong the crisis because it's not, its, it, it, it's not in its interest to have security back restored in that area because this would mean that Turkey has to get out. And we all know that Turkey now is occupying many parts of Syria. It is present in many positions outside the framework of the Astana agreements over there. And it is directly backing various terrorist groups, on top of which the al-Nusra Front uh, and Hayat Tahrir al-Sham inside Idlib. Uh, so it's not its, in its interest to actually have any kind of uh, calm or, or security or stability in that area. This is why, according to many analysts, we see uh, every uh, once in a while Turkey trying to uh, launch threats, attack some positions here and there, and always use that pretext that it is fighting the so-called serious democratic forces and that they can they, which they consider as terrorist groups. But eventually, what is very clear is that it does not want security back in Syria, and it's doing its utmost efforts to keep the situation unstable. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty uh, multifaceted in its dynamics there, Ken Stone, when you take a look at the way that uh, this whole Turkey-Syria thing is unfolding. First of all, tell us uh, what your reading is about uh, how Turkey stated aim is to go after these so-called SDF forces, uh, which are U.S.-backed Kurdish forces, I believe, also included within that context. Um, but uh, as a correspondent says, Turkey 
uh, is after uh, instability in Syria to keep it vulnerable, I guess? Well, in my view, uh, it's a very unfortunate development that Turkey ha has unleashed these attacks, uh, these aerial attacks and attacks through its uh, proxy forces in si inside Syria on the Syrian government, especially as Syrian uh, uh, army soldiers were killed and wounded. This is very serious. And there hasn't been a showdown like this since back in 2020, when uh, there was a confrontation by, between Syria and Turkey uh, over Idlib, in which 33 Turkish soldiers were killed. Lately, I think it's unfortunate because lately, the uh, Turkish government has been making moves and um, issuing statements indicating th that it wanted to resolve the conflict between itself and Syria. And it wanted to it recognize the sovereignty of Syria and its territorial integrity. And um, when Mr. Putin uh, mentioned on, uh, on August 5th, just a week or so ago to Mr. Erdogan that he wanted Mr. Erdogan to work with uh, Mr. President Assad to resolve the fighting in Syria. Uh, Erdogan responded saying he was in favor of that. And in fact, the, that the Turkish government had uh, made contacts, for example, at the, uh, on the sidelines of the, of the non-aligned meeting, the two foreign ministers, Mr. Çavuşoğlu and Mr. Al-Mahdad from uh, Syria had had, a talk, had had talks. And apparently, according to um, uh, Erdogan, the, uh, uh, the intelligence services of both countries had also had contacts. So it was looking as if, in recent weeks, that Turkey was moving toward a reconciliation with Syria and reestablishing diplomatic relations. But then these events happened in the last couple of days, which dash uh, our hopes for a peaceful solution. Now, you asked. What is the, you know, you said that it's a very multifaceted uh, situation in, in Syria. And I think, you know, from 35,000 feet, the big picture is that what's keeping everything unstable and keeping all the parties at each other's throats is the presence of the U.S., illegal presence of the U.S., the illegal occupation of the U.S., of the entire one-third or almost one-third of Syria east of the Euphrates. The U.S. is uh, sitting on the oil. It's stealing wheat uh, and uh, other resources from uh, that part of Syria. Uh, but that's not the big picture, I think. That's only part of the picture, big picture. The big picture is the U.S. is there to uh, destabilize the entire Syrian theater of war and, of course, Iraq as well. And by the United States occupation by linking itself, by allying itself to parties, Kurdish separatists actually, who uh, want to cause trouble for Syria, they are stirring the pot and they are preventing a solution, uh, a reconciliation between uh, Turkey and Syria. So the big, uh, the big issue is the U.S. has to get out of Syria and soon. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the sooner it gets out, the sooner the problems can be re resolved between Syria and Turkey. Uh, Muhammad Ali, I don't know if you can give us information about the move that the Turkish president's made when it comes to this, uh, and I believe our guest there was talking about it somewhat, about this reconciliation for these opposition groups to come and uh, pretty much uh, reconcile with uh, the democratically elected president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, of which they did not like that. They came out in protest. What do we know about that? What happened? Yes, uh, there is uh, no statements, official statements, of course, from uh, the Syrian side on that. Uh, what we only heard is from the Turkish side, when the Turkish foreign minister uh, said that uh, uh, previously he had a short, perhaps, discussion with his Syrian counterpart. But as you have just said, just following that announcement from the Turkish foreign minister, uh, uh, protests uh, by uh, various armed groups, let's say, and uh, people uh, inside uh, Idlib uh, took to the streets, the people over there and armed groups there took to the streets, and they even burned uh, the Turkish flag. This is how angry they were about uh, those uh, Turkish uh, statements. And many analysts also believe that, that the escalation that happened uh, recently since uh, also, uh, uh, yesterday, perhaps it's kind of 
uh, an escalation that wanted to calm down those uh, protests and those armed groups that Turkey has been supporting for years, eventually. So it, perhaps it may be a message from Turkey that uh, we are still backing you, uh, despite those perhaps calls for reconciliation between the so-called opposition and uh, the Syrian uh, government. So, so we still have to wait and see what will happen. But eventually, it seems that Turkey is starting to realize uh, that there is no end to this conflict without a political solution and reconciliation. And unfortunately, there will be no end to the crisis if Turkey does not s stop supporting those terrorists and close its borders before those armed groups and the support that they're getting from Turkey. Turkey has about more than 800 kilometers of borders with Syria, and this is the main gateway since day one of this crisis that terrorists use to infiltrate and to get their arms and support. So this is a main gateway that should be closed in order for the crisis to end. The support to terrorists should stop. The occupation of Turkey should stop and the occupation, of course, of the U.S. forces there should stop in order for the crisis to end.